the question is where do you draw your inspiration from and how do you translate all that into your writing? Well, you know, it part of your question is very much like a question that's asked a lot, which is where do you get your ideas? <clears throat> and for most writers, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, who write fiction, it's a it's a really challenging question because <clears throat> sorry, I've got something in my throat. So <clears throat> Um, it's a challenging question because uh, the inspiration, you don't really know where it comes from. Um, ideas occur to you um, in all kinds of spontaneous ways. Um, I'll overhear a, a snippet of conversation and I'll, because I'm not part of the conversation, I, I mishear something. Mm -hmm. But what I think I hear, as it, it will sound odd, but it, it, will, it, will, um, it will spark an idea. Uh, this, the, the thing that I thought I heard, which um, you'd never heard someone say. And so just uh, uh, a misunderstanding of a certain set of words together or an idea, um, uh, like as an, an example of that is uh, that I read is a guy was listening to uh, people have a conversation about um, Necco wafers. It's their little candies. I don't know if they even sell them anymore. Um, he thought he heard Necro wafers. <laughs> Oh, whoa. <laughs> so that's that's a, a horror. Story. Yeah, that's one example. Um, it happens just as easily by you know being inspired by a piece of art or a piece of music. Um, there are some writers who begin from a premise of a theme. They want to. Uh, um, I don't know very many writers who do that. And then there are some writers who start with um, in a very doctrinaire way. Um, their intent is to take a real world issue that they care about and write a story about it as kind of a ultimately a transparent um, way to um, I think influence um, people's ideas or, or opinions about it for me that's the least um, I never do that I think it's the least um, interesting I think is the least honest uh, I, I don't I think storytelling you can organically unauthentically influence how people feel about things if it's if it comes out of the story um, but to begin from a place of um, trying to be doctrinaire uh, uh, I just you know the, frankly that's easy to see in a, in a piece of fiction and I usually put those kinds of books down um, so the and then you know I think what happens with a lot of writers is um, they have interests for me it's music I, there's most of my major works have all had music at the center yeah. Um, obviously, the astonishing. I did a book for Jordan around yes. a thirty-minute piece he did on Wired for Madness. Um, my own fantasy series. The centerpiece for that is a is a magic system that's entirely based on music. Um, the 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 series that I'm um, going to co-author with a, a writer by the name of Brandon Sanderson. Uh, he wanted he chose me to collaborate with him on that because he knows I'm a musician and he knows I know the, the sort of metal community mm -hmm. and he had, the idea he had for the main character was a metal singer mm -hmm. and um, he he'd read my books uh, he knew I was a musician and so music will factor very heavily in that series um, I don't know if it's 100% true with all writers but I do think that they tend to write about things that they know and care about um, whether it's uh, basing a character off that or putting them into scenes and situations um you know obviously there there's guys like john grisham who do legal thrillers and michael Crichton who did um, um medical you know science uh, based fiction um so i think that's just the tendency and and it works well usually because um even if a person's a reader's not an expert they will recognize or feel authenticity in the details and so if you know a lot about something and you're, you're writing from that place of authority, um, it comes out on the page. Yeah. Um, writers can fake this by doing a lot of research, but it, it never plays quite as well as if it's something that is truly a part of like your own understanding and experience. Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense because it comes, I mean, those uh, words come naturally without having to force or source, you know? So I think, um, it does translate in, you know, 
um, whether one um, an author writes from something writes on something he knows really knows about or it's just something that he did like research for like the past few months and then you know just um, translates everything that he or she learned into a new book so I think pe readers actually pick up on those um, things it, um, if that's what you're saying so I completely agree so when you when you write do you write, um, you know, thinking about how the message is received by the audience? So, for example, some people, they pick authors that um, they may have an idea, but that they, they don't know how to write. So they pick authors who write books in a way that um, um, people can easily understand. So then, for example, some people choose to write books where they want people of any age to be able to pick up that book and to understand it easily. So when it comes to your writing, do you write the way you feel you should be writing or um, does part of your writing take that reader's factor into consideration as well? Yeah, I, I um, it's a very <laughs> nuanced question. Uh, you, you, Ultimately, I, I subscribe to the philosophy that you write to please yourself first. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because if you're writing um, specifically to please someone else, you're usually your motivations usually um, somehow skew the work, uh, skew the story. Um, and the, the truth about stories is that no story is for everybody. But be, there is this notion that as a human family, we, we have enough shared experiences that if I write something that I'm passionate about and that works for me, there's going to be an audience of people for whom it will also work and resonate. So I think that's more important. Now, having said that, writers do need to make um, some choices inside their books. Um, uh, right down to the word, you know, you can... Uh, you can have an amazing vocabulary and, and choose a word that is, is perfectly suited to what you're trying to communicate. But it also may be a word that less than 1% of the population knows. That's maybe not a good word choice because then you're just gonna create confusion for the reader. Um, may not be obvious from context or um, they have to stop and look it up or they don't and they're just confused. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's at the most basic level. Um, there are, um, other choices writers will make around the voice of the character. Um, uh, so if we're, as an example, the book I'm doing right now, the first book in this series with Brandon, um, I, I, the, my first instinct when uh, I was sort of fashioning the character was to really kind of go full in with um, a lot of what the shared rock and metal community would, would really love and appreciate and know. Um, and, but the the danger there is it, there's this sort of language that we share uh, inside the community that wouldn't be obvious to a reader who wasn't part of the community. Mm -hmm. And the what you want to do is you want uh, more than just the rock and metal community to read the book and draw an appreciation for this family that we I, that I think we are. You know, we have this shared language, this shared appreciation, not that we all like the same band, mm -hmm. but um, it's just been rare for me to go to a metal festival and find two people who are staunch um, fans of different bands fighting. Instead, mm -hmm. like there's this, 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 um, I want to call it a community or a brotherhood, but it's not just, not, it's not just guys, a sisterhood too. And um, so I want more than just our community to read it. I want them to read it and, and um, other people beyond it to read this and uh, and understand that there's this this really strong, um, supportive, um, powerful, loving community of people who who enjoy this music. Um, and so, in in that way, I make choices with some of the things I do in the story to um, be able to create touch points, um, you know, and uh, for for people who are not rock or metal lovers or or who understand it. Um, so I, you know, I could write the book, book in two ways, but I, uh, I'm, one of the things I'm hoping is that a lot of the people already read Brandon because he's a mega bestseller. 
um, who probably only know metal through cliches, uh, I, I, they're going to read this book. And I want them to read it, and I, wa I want them to, be, to sort of have this new perspective on uh, a whole millions of people that they may have sort of put in a box and, you know, um, think they understood who they are based upon these cliches. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, so, so I am being well. There's a lot in the book that I think res will resonate stronger for rock and metal fans. Um, I think that uh, it will. Uh, hope I'm I'm hoping that people will um, read this book and um, understand in the same way that everybody feels maybe put in a box for one reason or another. Acknowledge that um, they've maybe um, done short shrift to folks by thinking they were nothing more than, you know, throwing the metal horns or, uh, you know, or, you know, one, one rock, one metal song they heard 30 years ago. And so that's mm -hmm. what it sounds like. Yeah. Anyway, so it's a long answer to your question, but the, um, the writers just have to make these choices along the way. And usually um, the truth is, is that uh, it, it, what I found is you, you kind of trust your instincts um, and you're usually you're usually right if you do that. Um, the thing that I hate is when anything feels manufactured. Um, mm. So I, I, I'm very careful to try and write it in a way um, that feels authentic. Um, but I would be lying if I if I didn't say that I really do want. Uh, like I've been reading articles. You probably read these too. There's articles that have come out in the last few years where they've done studies that have shown that. Um, uh, one of them showed that the the metal community is um, on on percentage more faithful to their partners. Mm -hmm. There's one that that says that they're more they're more balanced in their personal lives between home and work. There's all of these studies showing, and it's like fascinating to find that this group of people that show up in movies and in books and stuff as cliches as caricatures actually you know have all of these sort of valuable qualities and i think that there's more research should be done as to why that is whether metal attracts that kind of person or if there's something about that shared experience with the music that um creates this kind of um these the, this psychology and this this balance in so many of its adherents and th this this idea these things that sort of break down these these artificial um stereotypes that mm -hmm. uh I, is a little personal thing that I, I it's, I'm not writing the book about that, but the character in this particular book, he's, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a real person. He's got real mm -hmm. concerns. He's got real relationships. Um, and he happens to be a metal singer. And so, you know, I think it's, I'm hoping that people will enjoy that. Oh, yeah. I think it's, uh, you make very good points there because um, people often have that misconception of, what uh, a person is like uh, if he or she supports uh, metal. And then again, it, it could be based on something they heard like 50 years, 30 years ago. And, and uh, to some people, everyone who likes metal is like somehow a, a, a satanic <laughs> faithful or something like that. You know, they always have that perception. And um, it, the same thing goes to, you know, people who have like piercings and tattoos and stuff like that. I think um, uh, the good thing is we, I think we do start to feel a, a change. It may be slow and gradual, but then I think the world sort of a bit more open right now, probably because of, you know, all that, all the access we have to the information out there and then therefore people are a bit more educated and also more connected to different people around the world so then they're not just um looking at you know a specific group of people from one angle i mean because they've got access to so many other people's perspective on um a specific group or whatever music or what whatsoever and i think it partly a lot of uh, what you said is true about metal people being, you know, um, somehow having certain qualities that are a bit better than the general, because I think it could also be due to the fact that, um, you know, metal, metal music in general, it often, most of the time it's melancholic and it's a very expressive kind of um, music and it, it's it's not that it's not out there, but then it's rare to find um, 
metal music just talking about ass or things like that, which you often find in <laughs> R&B, which have, uh, I mean, I've got without any without disrespecting any other genres but then some genres um, often churn out music that have you know not to say none but very little substance or you know so and I think that's kind of rare in metal because it's always about expressing very deep emotions be it uh, positive ones or negative ones and um, I think it has to do a lot with that. It, there's a certain level of, um, I don't know how to put it. I mean, you do feel that it's genuine, if you get what I mean, um, when it comes to metal music. Yeah, you know, the, um, I've always, I'm always quick to say that, that music is so intensely personal. And so it's, you, it, you, there's no sort of standard of measure by which one style is better than another. But I think objectively, one thing that you can say about um, uh, the metal music that is different is just from a sort of sonic perspective, there's a much broader um, vocabulary of intensity uh, uh, to address different kinds of feelings. Um, you know, because on the, on the one extreme end, you can hear something excruciatingly heavy. Um, whether that for someone that's fast or just a really deep drag beat and they're they're tuned down, but there's there's ways to express anger and frustration and remorse on one level that just creates that you know so much intensity of sound, and on the on the far extreme something that's you know nylon string guitar and a, a metal band and everything in between for. Um, being, you know, up going to a party, something upbeat and just frivolous, something that's um, addressing um, situations in life, uh, you know, the the arrival of a child, um, and, you know, and, and death. And and one of the, if you start thinking about many of the genres, they don't avail themselves, or just, maybe it's just the the trappings of those genres, they don't seem to have as many um, um, tools. Um, it, it, uh, and as broad a palette to paint with for, I don't, you know, it's just the, the nature of some of the genres. Um, but, but metal is really sort of interest. It's, it gets so stereotypically confined to a certain sound, but really the, the, the musicians paint with such a broad number of brushes. Uh, and I don't mean to sound too high minded uh, about it, but it's just, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm cataloging through all these different artists who um, are able to, use so many different complexions of instruments um, and play with different intensity and dynamics uh, so that they can, uh, anything, any subject matter they want to treat, they can treat. And the, the sonic uh, bed of it, the, the, it, is, it suits the subject matter. And there's very few genres of music that have that sort of, that breadth of um, sort of sonic vocabulary to, to tell their stories. Uh, and so it's a it's it's interesting to me in that way that um, it's not more popular genre at least in the United States. Mm -hmm. and it's not what you hear on the radio. Um, and again, not to disparage what's popular on the radio, but um, that you know when you need that song that you need to, to crank because you just need to let out frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, it surprises me that there's not uh, you know more people wanting to turn on certain metal tunes. And by and and um, by contrast, some of the songs that m most achingly deal with loss, um, you know, I've heard from doom metal bands that no one's heard of. So, you know, I'm I'm a I'm I'm obviously biased, but I think that it's a unique genre in its abilities to uh, treat so many different feelings and stories. Uh, like I don't I can't even think of another genre that can. That's true. It, ra it ranges from rage to like, you know, very um, um, upbeat emotions. And it's just, I mean, even though it's heavy, but it, it's amazing how this genre.